Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And today we'll be talking about classic horror, specifically the 20 greatest classic horror books of all time, according to me. According to me. I mean, who else are you going to go to for this kind of stuff? Probably a lot of people. But let's talk about the top 20 greatest horror books, according to me, greatest classic horror books. None of these books uh, date further than the 1930s, as far as the writing uh, is concerned, anyway. So I did a video called the Top 10 Classic Horror Books before. It was my very second video, the second video I ever did. I obviously was not comfortable uh, in front of the camera yet. Watching it now, it's kind of like watching an alien who's pretending to be me and doing a really bad job and who is dressed really poorly. But probably more importantly, I've rethought the list. I've thought a lot about this list. I've thought a lot about classic horror and classic horror books since I made that video. And my mind has changed on a few things. And so I decided to go for a top 20 list because that's more fun and to differentiate this video from that earlier video I did long ago. So yeah, the top 20 classic horror books. Let's get right to it. Number 20, The Horror Stories of Robert E. Howard. The Horror Stories of Robert E. Howard. Of course, I've got to put Robert E. Howard on this list. He's the greatest pulp writer of all time. And he wrote some excellent horror stories. Pigeons, Pigeons from Hell. Pigeons from Hell. That doesn't sound particularly terrifying, but it's a scary story. He also did The Black Stone, Old Garfield's Heart. He did a lot of really good horror stories. He did some horror stories that were not so good also, but he did some good stuff. And because he's Robert E. Howard, I put him on the list. Of course I did. Let's go to number 19 now. Number 19, The Collected Ghost Stories of E.F. Benson. E.F. Benson wrote some fantastic classic ghost stories, but he didn't just write ghost stories. Even though all his stories are called ghost stories, all his horror stories are called ghost stories, but he wrote about other things or other creepy creatures other than ghosts. He wrote about some creepy stuff. And he's been anthologized over and over. So if you have any classic horror or classic ghost story anthologies, you will probably find a story or two from E.F. Benson. I should, I should talk more about his writing, and I will in the future. For now, take it from me. You should get this book because this guy wrote some excellent, excellent stories, great horror stories. And if you're interested in classic horror, you should definitely read this guy's work. Let's go to number 18, The Rim of Morning by William Sloan. Now this book actually is a book that contains two short novels by William Stone. The Walk, To Walk, excuse me, To Walk the Night and The Edge of Running Water. These are both cosmic horror stories, but they're not cosmic horror stories in the way for example, H.P. Lovecraft would write a cosmic horror story. But definitely, it's cosmic horror. But a lot more human-centered. And really, really good horror stories. This particular volume has an introduction by Stephen King. More people should read these two books. He's probably been forgotten because these are the only two horror novels that he wrote. He just wrote these two and said, okay, I'm done, which is fine. But more people should read these. They are works of their time. But in a way, there are things about these books that kind of go beyond their time. They kind of are ahead of their time in a way, even though there are things about them that are very 1930s. But yeah, more people should read this book. It's an excellent, excellent book with these two great horror novels, which which they just have some of the creepiest 
pros in them. There's just the creepiest stuff are in these books. You should read these books. So anyway, let's go to number 17, The Dark Eidolon and Other Fantasies by Clark Ashton Smith. Now, these are fantasy stories mostly, although there are straight horror stories in here. These are horror, science fiction, and fantasy stories, but they're all dark. The fantasy stories are dark. The science fiction stories are dark. This is all dark stuff. Clark Ashton Smith's The Dark Eidolon and other fantasies. Some, some of his poetry is in this book, and it's amazing. Definitely Clark Ashton Smith, one of the big three of Weird Tales, along with Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft, definitely has been influential in the horror genre. And just beautifully written stories. So, yeah. The Dark Eidolon and Other Fantasies by Clark Ashton Smith. You should read that. It's really good. So... Let's move on to number 16, The House on the Borderland by William Hope Hodgson. Now, Hodgson wrote a lot of stuff. I've got the collected works of Hodgson up here, William Hope Hodgson. The House on the Borderland is my favorite. I don't think it suffers some of the weaknesses that some of his other books did. It's really weird. Again, it's cosmic horror but very strange and much different than the horror that H.P. Lovecraft wrote. Again, this is a whole other thing, The House on the Borderland, about The House on the Borderland and with giant pig monsters. Where did they come from? What are these things? I mean, this book has a dreamlike sense of unreality that is also startlingly immediate and real. It's weird. It's like a really realistic nightmare where just weird stuff happens. There are lapses in logic that also make a strange kind of sense. And it just, you should read this book. It's excellent, The House on the Borderland. So now let's go to number 15, The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. I only read this last year, I think, for the first time, this book, and it is fantastic. Now, The Phantom of the Opera isn't a supernatural story. The opera ghost is not a ghost. But he is an insidious villain. He's an insidious villain that you also can be very sympathetic to. Great story. A lot of fun. Sort of trashy in a way, and yet excellent. Some great scenes in this book. I would recommend a newer translation like the Penguin translation uh, or one of the newer translations because some of the older translations I hear cut some stuff out. But yeah, The Phantom of the Opera, it's brilliant. You should read that book. So let's move on to number 14, The Monk by Matthew Lewis. The Monk by Matthew Lewis a gothic horror story that is pretty over the top. I mean, it's got some, well, it's got some trashy stuff in here. I think V.C. Andrews must have read this book. There's some, there's some good stuff in this book, The Monk, uh, by Matthew Lewis. And it's, again, a tremendously influential novel. There's a lot of stuff going on in this book. There are plots, there are subplots, there are subplots to the subplots. There's perversion. There's all kinds of unholy stuff going on. It's, it's great. It's great, The Monk. It's good fun. Good gothic fun, The Monk, by Matthew Lewis. One of those books I don't think too many people read nowadays, but you should read it if you're into horror, definitely. It, it's, it's definitely a classic horror book that you should read. The next one, though, woo, number 13, The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers. H.P. Lovecraft was a big fan of this book, The King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers, featuring a play that if you read it, you go insane. You read this thing, man, it's, you're, you're done. You're done. So this is a collection of stories 
a lot of the stories have been anthologized. So even if you have, even if you haven't read this book, you you might have read some of the stories that are in this book. If you read horror anthologies, this has been tremendously influential. Although I'm not sure how many people have actually read this, I don't see this book talked about too much on BookTube. And it probably should be. I probably should talk about this book. I probably should, but I've got to reread it because it's been a long time since I've read it. Uh, individual stories I've read more recently just from anthologies, but I need to sit down and read the whole thing again. Uh, the King in Yellow by Robert W. Chambers, which brings me to number 12, The Island of Dr. Moreau. The Island of Dr. Moreau. So Doc Island of Dr. Moreau, this is a science fiction story, but it is definitely a horror story. H.G. Wells, he put a lot of horror in his science fiction, his early science fiction stories. And this probably has the most horror in it. But even War of the Worlds with, with its creepy blood-drinking Martians and the Morlocks in the Time Machine, his stuff, and of course the Invisible Man, his stuff definitely had horror elements, but I think The Island of Dr. Moreau is a straight up horror novel more than anything else that it is. Fantastic story about the twisted Dr. Moreau who just decides he wants to turn animals into humans, or at least as close as he can get. Why? Well, why not? He's a mad scientist, and that's what mad scientists do. So yeah, it's excellent, The Island of Dr. Moreau. Great book. But let's move on to Green Tea and Other Weird Stories, number 11, by Sheridan Le Fanu. Sheridan Le Fanu. Now, this is the Oxford edition of this book, which is excellent. It has uh, all of his major horror stories in it, like Carmilla is in this collection. It is an excellent collection. Again, tremendously influential, this guy. You should read this book, this book in particular, because it has his best horror stories in it. His best creepy stuff is in this book. And it's awesome. Again, if you've read horror anthologies, you've read some of the stories in this book. Carmilla is published as its own book or ebook, So a lot of people have read that. But yeah, you should read all of this stuff because this stuff is excellent. Great supernatural writer with his own unique style, which brings me to a horror novel, which isn't really considered a horror novel. But the more I think about this book, the more I think it's a horror novel, and I'm not alone in thinking this. That's number 10, Wuthering Heights, Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Just a fantastic novel, powerful novel, really dark, dark novel with just some characters that are just thoroughly unpleasant. It is not the romance you might think it might be if you've seen some of those old movies. This is not just a romance on the moors. This is a dark story with supernatural elements. Now, the way it's written, is this stuff really supernatural? Is there real supernatural going on here, or is it just in the characters' minds? No, I think there's real supernatural stuff going on in this novel, and I think it's a horror novel, and a really, really good one. So I'm going to go with Wuthering Heights for number 10, which brings me to number 9, Ancient Sorceries and Other Weird Stories by Algernon Blackwood. This is the Penguin edition, although you can get the best of Algernon Blackwood from Dover, which is also really good. But the stories in this volume are fantastic, hugely, influ hugely influential. Uh, the Willows has been called the greatest weird story ever written by H.P. Lovecraft, so it is probably one of the greatest classic weird stories, for sure. It, it definitely is. It's, a, it's an amazing story. This also has the Wendigo. It has uh, ancient sorceries. It has some excellent stories by Algernon Blackwood, a very influential horror writer, one of the major figures in classic horror, Algernon Blackwood. And yet, surprisingly, there are not enough volumes of Blackwood out there. You can get everything he wrote on ebook, but Oxford, I don't think, even has 
a volume for this guy, and they should, because this is the real deal. This is this is classic stuff. So yeah, Algernon Blackwood. Definitely. So let's move on to number eight, The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. The Picture of Dorian Gray, my favorite naughty character, Dorian. Dorian Gray, everyone knows what this is about, how he has a picture painted. And as he becomes, well, as he becomes a worse and worse character, as he becomes naughtier and naughtier and does morally shady things, the picture becomes ugly and twisted. And the picture will age and grow older while Dorian remains young and beautiful looking. Although on the inside, Dorian is just getting more and more twisted and evil and immoral. It's an excellent story. It's a strong supernatural story by Oscar Wilde. Fantastic book. I think it's underrated, even though it's an acknowledged classic. Uh, as a horror story, I think it's probably underrated still. I think everybody who's interested in horror needs to read this book because it's fantastic. Just, a, just an excellent book with a lot of deep themes in this book, which I don't have time to talk about, but because we're, because we're moving on to number seven, The Great God Pan and Other Horror Stories by Arthur Mackin. The Great God Pan. This is a major horror story. One of the greatest horror stories ever written was The Great God Pan. And in this volume, you get a lot more than that. This is the Oxford volume. This is the one to get the Oxford volume of Arthur Mackin. Uh, there is an Arthur Mackin that's published by Penguin, but this is better. So yeah, The Great God Pan and Other Stories, fantastic stuff, dark stuff, spooky stuff, and very influential stuff. This, these stories pack a punch. These are major horror stories with real horror, real shocking horror in these books. And Arthur Mackin is a great writer, uh, one of the major Welsh writers. And yeah, definitely. Definitely Arthur Mackin coming in at number seven. Let's move on to number six with the collected ghost stories of M.R. James. M.R. James wrote these excellent ghost stories. Now his ghosts were serious business, M.R. James. You don't want to mess with these things because they were creepy, horrible, and dangerous. And, you know, all it takes to be a victim of these ghosts and these stories is just to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. It doesn't matter whether you're a good or bad person. You just, you know, the wrong place, the wrong time, you're toast. Um, or you're in very, you're in danger of being uh, toast anyway. Uh, you don't mess with these ghosts. If, you, if you've ever seen the movie The Ring or Ringu or read that book, The Ring, that kind of story is very much in the tradition of M.R. James. When I saw the movie, I saw the movie, I haven't read the book yet. I remember thinking, this is an M.R. James story. It wasn't, but it followed along uh, with his type of horror. Uh, it was, it, I don't know if it was, was influenced, but it seemed influenced by James stuff, because that's the kind of thing he writes. He, he didn't mess around, M.R. James. And I, my, my appreciation of him grows every time I read this guy. As I get older, I appreciate him more. So that was M.R. James coming in at number six. Number five, Dark, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Everybody knows this story. It is kind of a werewolf story where you have Dr. Jekyll who transforms himself into Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde, who can do all the naughty things that Dr. Jekyll, the good, kind Dr. Jekyll, really wants to do because at heart, Dr. Jekyll's kind of a creep. He wants you to, he wants it to seem like, you know, he is the moral one. He's good. But when he becomes Dr. Jekyll, he's bad. No, he's a creep. And Mr. Hyde just lets thought, that all out. When he's Mr. Hyde, he's free to do all the horrible stuff. Deep down, he really wanted to do all along. Dr. Jekyll, great story. 
excellent story. Really well written. Um, this must have been something when it first came out. Number four, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This book is amazing. Frankenstein is an incredible book. Wonderfully written. Some beautiful prose in this book. Deep book. Lots of themes in this book. Man's inhumanity to man. Uh, what happens when you don't take care of your responsibilities. There's a lot of stuff going on in this book. It's not a lot like a lot of the movies you've seen. The Frankenstein monster, for example, is a very intelligent creature who becomes a monster because of his unique circumstances and the way he has been, well, just cast aside by Frankenstein himself. It's brilliant. I've talked about this book before. I'll talk about this book again. Frankenstein, it's amazing. Which brings me to number three, Dracula by Bram Stoker. Dracula, one of the greatest horror novels of all time. Everybody knows how influential this book is. This book is. It's Dracula. They've made nine million movies about Dracula. It's never been out of print. It's amazing. It's a great monster story. It's an excellent horror story. There's been tons of stuff written about Dracula and all the stuff behind Dracula and all the stuff that Dracula is really about. I don't know how much of that is real and how much isn't, but it is an excellent horror story. It's a great book. It's a lot of fun. It's not perfect. You know, Van Helsing can be a little tough to take and we get too much of him, but altogether, it's great. You should read Dracula if you haven't read Dracula, which brings me to number two. And I'm just going to go with the complete tales and poems of Edgar Allan Poe, even though not all his tales and poems are horror. A lot of them are, though. And even some of the stuff that isn't really horror is kind of dark. Even some of his humor is kind of dark. There's a lot of dark stuff in Edgar Allan Poe, obviously. Hugely, hugely influential, of course. He's Edgar Allan Poe. I'm kind of surprised he's not number one on this list, but he's not number one on this list. But he has to at least make number two close to being number one. Again, the more I think about Edgar Allan Poe, the more important he seems. A major figure in horror. Obviously, Edgar Allan Poe. So who could be number one? Well, you know who number one is. It has to be H.P. Lovecraft with the complete fiction of H.P. Lovecraft. Again, H.P. Lovecraft wrote other things other than horror. In the complete fiction, you will have a lot of fantasy. You will also have one romantic comedy. Believe it or not, there is one. Uh, some humorous stories, a couple of humorous stories, which really aren't that humorous, unless you're H.P. Lovecraft, I guess. But most of this is straight-up horror, and even his fantasy is pretty horrifying at times. Uh, the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath has some stuff in it that is just... Blah. Another book I'm going to be talking about very soon, because I haven't talked about that yet. But this is the major figure. This is the major 20th century figure in horror. H.P. Lovecraft is the most important horror writer of the 20th century. Some of you are going to say Stephen King. It's not Stephen King. Uh, it's not even Richard Matheson. It's H.P. Lovecraft. He made a lot of things possible in horror. He was writing horror in a way that nobody had ever even conceived horror could be. He was unique. And even though he was influenced by some of the other writers on this list, very clearly Arthur Mackin and Algernon Blackwood influenced him, he was, he was his own writer. He wrote his own way. He had a unique style, which has often been, well, put down and derided, but he was the master of his style. He used his style for an effect, and I think it was very effective. H.P. Lovecraft, you can't touch this guy's work. So yeah, that's it. That's my top 20 classic horror books. Let me know 
all the ways that I'm wrong in the comments down below and all the stuff that should have been on here that isn't. I'm always interested in that kind of thing. You know, in another couple years, I might do this again. You never know. So, I will leave you for now. I will be back. I don't know when I'll be back. A couple days, maybe. I don't know. But I will be back. I've got to do... Well, I've got to do a tag for Garbogast. I definitely have to do that. Okay, guys. I will see you next time.